Hello. Welcome to our talk, Ironic and Edgy. This talk is going to be delivered by... Okay, my name is Dmitry Tansur. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat and a upstream contributor for OpenStack Ironic Project for more than five years. My name is Ilya Itengov. I used to work at product security at Red Hat, then I switched teams and I'm not now working at um, Ironic team with OpenStack organization. I mostly work on, on the Redfish implementation and things like that. You will notice that shortly. In this talk, we're going to explain what the edge effort is and why it is be becoming increasingly important and wanted by many OpenStack operators. We'll go on, go on explaining the bare metal provisioning technologies and why it is relevant with the edge use case. In the Ironic project, we seem to have many areas to address and improve to make Ironic the best tool or a better tool for, for bare metal provisioning at the edge. It seems that the edge effort is driven by many factors. Just to name a few, the growth of IoT devices deployments pushes the data collection and processing facilities closer to the IoT swarms. The emergence of high quality broadband video delivery services pushes the data storage facilities closer to the households. It also seems that some data center operators probably trying to cut costs and improve margins they, they, they are looking at the unusual locations for their data centers, places like near Arctic Circle, where the electricity is cheaper and colder climate helps saving on the cooling infrastructure. The other factor, all, all these factors call for better automation of, of the data centers. Besides that, otherwise unrelated trends like, uh, like applying da data learning, machine learning, data mining, and artificial intelligence technologies on the data center management tasks, these things also, also contribute to this desire for better automation of, of the data centers. Once we move pieces of our hardware to the edge of the network, it becomes, any kind of physical access becomes a, a problem, a challenging thing, or even impossible thing. Therefore, because there is no one to, 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 to switch or to power circle or to, to do anything with the hardware, uh, the only practical way to deal with, with uh, the hardware at the edge is through the network. But the network at this distance becomes lossy, unreliable, unstable, insecure, and um, any kind of network access becomes challenging. Therefore, the reliable and sophisticated that uh, hardware management protocol becomes more and more important. Uh, on top of that, smaller points of presence may impose additional limits on, on the size, on, on the rec space, cooling and power required for, for hardware management harness. Uh, stretching the control plane across the globe effectively it increases the attack surface on the control plane, making the whole cloud less secure. And again, this calls for more secure and modern uh, hardware management protocol. For cloud operator, setting up the infrastructure is not, a, is not necessarily the, a one-time affair. It's more like a continuous process because not only they need to enroll their, their, their nodes once, they might need to phase out the broken ones to enroll the new ones, or maybe they eventually need to wipe out everything and lend the whole, the whole hardware uh, infrastructure to somebody else. It seems that many hardware vendors finally converge or converging on the this, on this single protocol suite for, for managing all kinds of hardware. The latest development in this area is known as Redfish, uh, basically protocol, uh, and it seems that many vendors are trying to apply it and implement it 
to manage all, all, all the offerings. Let's talk about the Ironic project. Uh, so Ironic is a project under the OpenStack umbrella, one of its main uh, many projects uh, dedicated to uh, bare metal provisioning and lifecycle management. It appeared that an official project since in the Kilo release cycle, uh, it can work standalone, it can work as a plugin for the OpenStack Compute project, which is known as Nova. Uh, it covers a wide number of features, not only putting an operating system to a hard drive, but also BIOS management, RAID management, uh, cleaning your hardware between tenants, and a few other cool features. We have a lively upstream community. For example, in the latest Rocky release, we've seen 359 commits from 81 contributors from 24 different companies. We have established relationships with hardware vendors and good support for this hardware. This includes Dell, HP, Fujitsu, Lenovo, Cisco as of the latest release. We're adding Huawei in the current release. Uh, we have well support for a variety of uh, established standards as well as new and modern standards, and just to name a few, it's APMI, Pixie, iPixie, Redfish, SNMP, UFI. We actually have decent UFI support, support for secure boot uh, for some vendors. So, uh, yeah, it should be quite visible. This is how uh, Ironic fits in the whole picture of OpenStack. And as I said, it can also be used completely standalone without any other OpenStack projects. Uh, Ironic works as a backend for OpenStack Compute, which is Nova, pulls images from uh, OpenStack Image Service Glance, uh, uses Cinder for providing boot from volumes, uh, using the networking service to provide connectivity to uh, virtual networks, and we actually can work with uh, the Neutron service to uh, provide switch management, uh, get nodes on VLANs and uh, back. And of course, we can provide authentication uh, through the OpenStack Identity Service Keystone. And in pre-edge world, this is how your uh, Ironic architecture can look. You have a controller node. It hosts your essentially your control plane. You have, for example, Nova API, the remaining Nova services. Uh, you have Ironic API there. Then you have dedicated Ironic conductor nodes, or you can host uh, Ironic conductor service on the controller node. but Generally, it's better to have a few of them. Uh, they have Ironic Conductor Service, which manages nodes through drivers. And driver implement various aspects of hardware management depending on the vendor, depending on the technology you want to use. And drivers talk to bare metal nodes. Uh, usually, we have some redundancy, right? Several conductors can manage several nodes for HA purposes. And Ironic works in active-active HA mode. And again, in the classical deployments, uh, it can look like this. Uh, deployment starts, uh, Ironic Conductor builds a TFTP environment, a Pixie environment to build the node, configures the networking service to provide DHCP arguments, uses APMI, for example, to power on the node. It boots from network, boots into special deploy image where we have a, an API service called Ironic Python Agent because it's written in Python and it's agent and it's for Ironic. And it provides some API endpoint to do various things to the node. For example, our oldest and most probably widely used method is to um, expose the root device uh, through the iSCSI protocol, which then is connected to the Ironic conductor, which then flushes the image onto this iSCSI share, reboots the node, sets up uh, DHCP or sets up uh, grab local boot for the final instance, and a user can use it. So it can be through Nova, so it will look like normal cloud, or it can be through Ironic standalone, and will be probably uh, more like a standard provisioning. So edge architectures, what challenges do they bring us? Well, first, Pixie. Uh, is based on UDP, as Elia is going to uh, tell you in the details. DHCP as well, uh, across wide area networks, they can be unreliable, they can be insecure. Um, IPMI is also based on UDP and is both unreliable and insecure. So, short quiz, uh, who here knows about Cypher Zero and IPMI? Okay, wonderful, I'm gonna tell you some cool story. I, uh, Cypher Zero is a standard mode in the IPMI protocol, which it's the protocol for management bare metal machines out of band, which allows using authentication 
without authentication. Yeah, you heard me right. It's a mo authentication mode when you can provide any username and any password. It was invented long ago. Probably back then it was not a concern. For Edge, it probably is. Um, traditionally, other things traditionally, OpenStack use the same QP for RPC. Um, it allows for quite reliable RPC connection between components within each uh, OpenStack service, but stretching, for example, RabbitMQ over, again, wide area can be a challenge or impossible. There's some work in stretching Cupid, but there are problems there as well. And of course, low bandwidth between um, your central location and your edge locations can be a challenge with, for example, flashing the image to iSkyZ. So, what are we doing about that? Um, we are working on various approaches to federating Ironic to splitting it more efficiently in ge uh, geographically distributed way. Uh, Ilya is going to talk about replacing Pixie Boot with uh, approaches like Virtual Media or UFI HTTP Boot, which uh, allows using UDP-based protocols and not using UDP-based protocols for transferring images. Um, also, Ilya is going to talk about uh, how we plan on avoiding DHCP over when. Uh, we have implemented uh, streaming of the images uh, directly to the hard drive. I'm going to talk, to, uh, I'm going to talk to about it in a bit more details later. And we are actively working on HTTP-based management protocols instead of APMI. Also, we have support for Secure Boot, as I mentioned. So, uh, what about federation? There are uh, several approaches. Some are implemented, some are still in discussion, some are in early planning. I think it's uh, like conductor groups allows you to group this ironic conductor together with nodes in a separate domains of DHCP and Pixie so that your DHCP and Pixie traffic doesn't have to cross uh, large boundaries. Uh, this is implemented and available. Uh, I have built a prototype to replace uh, RabbitMQ with JSON RPC, so it may be an option for Edge to avoid stretching MQP at the expense of maybe a, a bit uh, of losing persistence for your RPC traffic. And for example, with conductor groups, your architecture could turn to something like that. You still have control plane in your central location. Uh, you now have two dedicated locations with each or one or several ironic conductor instances with their own set of drivers and with their own nodes. So you see this IPMI traffic and Pixie traffic here is isolated uh, within one location. And with probably JSON RPC, you uh, can avoid having a RabbitMQ shared. We still have a database shared between locations here and some future ideas include, for example, using switching to a per conductor database where each conductor, a group of conductor, only handles its own, only have information about their own bare metal machines and they don't share it. It will require quite some coding work on the API level. So we need input, by the way, from people who are interested in all this work. We need to know what you think about it, um, what would work, what would not work for you. I have a prototype of a bit different thing in a federating proxy. It is essentially an implementation of Ironic API that talks to other Ironic API instances as a backends. So then uh, you could, uh, each of your edge location would have a complete Ironic installation with its own API database, RPC, whatever. And this federating proxy would just talk to them through the same HTTP API as the clients do. And to talk about booting, I pass to Ilya. Thank you. Uh, maybe it's a little bit of trivia. Uh, to any computer to boot, there, there would be at least two phases involved. Uh, network boot. Uh, first, uh, network, the computer needs to find its place on the network. That is, it needs to initialize its network stack. And uh, second, secondly, the computer needs to pull the image of the network and start executing it. Apparently, this process is not, not uh, reliable and not easy. The problem of booting has been approached many years ago. The first and still widely used implementation, we still use it in Ironic, uh, is, is known as, as Pixie. This Pixie is a suite, suite of protocol based on two quite ancient protocols developed in probably 80s. Uh, one is boot P DHCP, which is used for network initialization, and the other is TFTP, which is used for image transfer. Both protocols probably were designed 
with a small network interface cards in, in mind and the small installations. Therefore, they are pretty efficient on the resources, but they are also quite unreliable because both are based on UDP. Uh, therefore, later on, the industry came up with a new implementation or more sophisticated implementation known as IPixi. This, with IPixi, the second phase of, of the boot process, the image transfer, has been replaced uh, with a more reliable protocol, HTTP or iSCSI. Although the, the first phase, network initialization, is still based on, uh, on UDP, DHCP. Later on, uh, especially in the context of, of cloud uh, deployments, uh, this uh, first unreliable UDP-based phase becomes a problem, and therefore uh, the virtual media boot technology came up. Uh, with virtual, virtual media boot, uh, there is this small satellite computer sitting at the, at the edge of the main system, which is, and th this computer is called BMC, Baseboard Management Controller. This computer is always up, and it has intimate location uh, relationship with, um, with the main system. It can power cycle it, for instance, or configure it. This um, BMC uh, computer implements virtual media agent, uh, which can be instructed to pull the image of the network on its own, and then insert this image into virtual CD, and instruct the main system to boot from virtual CD, like a local boot. This virtual media technology offers many advantages. For instance, the, the pulled image can be cached, it can be authenticated, or uh, it, and, and the most importantly, <coughs> in the edge context, uh, this, the boot process can be done completely over, over reliable, reliable protocols, over layer three, la layer three protocols, uh, TCP in particular. <coughs> With the uh, ironic uh, deploy process, there is still one phase which requires UDP. In the, in the case when, when we need to deploy a computer with a local drive, we need to somehow write the user image on the local drive to let the computer boot from the local drive later on. For this phase of the deployment, we use a piece of Ironic embedded into a so-called deploy image. This deploy image is called at, the, at, at some point, is, is booted at some point on, in, in, into the computer and Ironic runs there, Ironic pulls the user image of the network and writes it down on the, on the local drive. This deploy image still uses a DHCP. Virtual media offers the way to get rid of DHCP even, even here by using so-called virtual floppy for passing network configuration to the deploy image through virtual floppy rather than through the, through the network, through the DHCP. Uh, there, it's, it's not yet implemented, but there is a spec on that, and uh, Upstream is working on this feature. Um, so a few words about uh, writing images and images streaming. As I said, we started with uh, iSCSI-based approach, which is quite easy to bootstrap, had nearly no requirements on uh, the target hardware. As it became apparent, it's not the most efficient, the most reliable way to deploy anything. Uh, we progressed to using this ironic Python agent on the target machines to download an image from an HTTP location, cache it in the memory, and put it to disk. Now, with the, this work, uh, we, pro we progressed to using streaming. So, essentially, we prepare an image on the conductor side, and then uh, the ironic Python agent side just download that image directly uh, to the block device, bypassing any in-memory cache. So we got back to very low uh, memory requirements. Um, but there's still some bandwidth requirements, and, and another idea that has been floating in the air, and some contributors actually did work on it, uh, but it kind of got stuck, is distributing images via BitTorrent protocol. Uh, in this case, an image would be seeded from a running conductor, and then the remaining nodes at the remote location would uh, help uh, the other nodes receive the image, and thus reducing the traffic between uh, the central location and the edge location. 
so to sum it up, we uh, upstream is actively working on enabling uh, edge architectures, enabling bare metal deployment in the edge architectures. Uh, our main direction of development right now is uh, various approaches to federating architecture, reliable boot methods and reliable methods of delivering uh, network parameters, and uh, efficient and fast image delivery for remote locations. And we need your help. If you have use case that requires you provisioning or managing bare metals at, uh, in the edge architecture, we want you to talk to us. Please come to our C. Uh, please come to our mailing list. We want, to, <clears throat> we want to know about your use cases. We want to know about uh, your requirements. And of course, if you want to help us coding, we'd be very welcome. We have a, a, an active community. We're going to review your code. And I guess that's it. We actually finished quite early. So we have plenty of time for questions. So uh, the question is, uh, what's the status of the current Pixie support? Yeah, it's still uh, very well supported, both Pixie and iPixie. Of course, we tend to recommend iPixie as a bit more reliable alternative. And Ironic supports a chain loading iPixie, so if your machine only supports Pixie, for example, we can uh, load the iPixie image and then can see, proceed with iPixie, which is, as Elia mentioned, a bit more reliable. At least you can have a short stage when you have to use TFTP and then your large uh, transfer with deploy image happens over HTTP. Um, <clears throat> we also use iPixie, it's not like edge topic, but we also use iPixie to implement booting from iSCSI volumes, integrating with uh, OpenStack volume service. Anything else? Uh, we have upstream documentation on that. Um, it can use some love, actually, this documentation. It's not bad. Uh, I personally, so a minute of advertisements. Uh, I personally developed uh, a, a library and CLI tool called Metalsmith, which is designed to work with Ironic standalone or with Ironic and Neutron and Glance, but no Nova. It's, it's much easier than using our API directly. So you're writing Python code or you're writing scripts, please take a look at this uh, library slash scripts. I would love feedback. Okay, so the question is about multi-architecture or multi, um, no, multi-architecture essentially support for wide definition of architecture. Yes, we support that. Um, on the one level, you can use different drivers per node. So, for example, say you have only PMI somewhere, you have only Redfish somewhere, you use different drivers. The deploy images can be different per node again. The Pixie configuration, if you use Pixie and iPixie, can be different per architecture. You have CPU arch property in Ironic nodes and you can configure the Pixie environment to serve a completely different configuration based on the architecture of the node. Uh, follow up. Mm -hmm. So it's not implemented out of box. What you could do, uh, we have a service called Ironic Inspector. It implements bare metal inspection and introspection in band by booting the RAM. You could probably know, but I'm just telling for other people. It has a feature uh, called introspection rules. That's a mini DSL which you define through API, which can run on the data you receive and can do things with nodes. So you can define rules that say, okay, I received this vendor string, set deploy image to this. 
that can be viable if ironic inspector is an option for you. Uh, so the question is how, to, to, to which extent the Redfish out of band, in, by Redfish based out, out of band inspection is implemented or supported in Ironic? Uh, it's it's implemented uh, and uh, it's merged. It's not yet uh, released. I mean, it's 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 uh, in, in in master. Uh, so, but how usable it, it it is depends great deal of of the hardware because it depends on what properties of the nodes are exposed. If you have a pretty rich Redfish implementation in your BMC, which exposes things like CPU clocking, local storage, then all these things could be pulled by, 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 by Ironic. But, yeah. So the, the question is, will the world converge on Redfish eventually, or not? <laughs> well, well the, uh, yes, the intention behind Redfish is to, to, to make everyone using Redfish. But on the, on the other hand, the Redfish is, as a standard is designed in a way that everyone can implement its own Redfish. redfish. So we, are, we may very well end up with a Redfish school like many redfishes, which uh, which are different, and therefore each requires its, its own vendor-specific driver. And then we are back to where we are, but where we were. But uh, still, well, may maybe maybe vendors will converge and use the standard redfish schemas and implement at least the basic features of hardware management in the same way. And Ironic could use the same driver for that. So we don't know. Uh, so um, the question is about converging deploy methods, like SCSI Direct and others to Redfish. So in Ironic, um, there's some terminology confusion. In Ironic, we do, uh, distinguish uh, deploy interface and boot interface. So deploy interface is how you move the image there and uh, actually put it on the disk. And Redfish so far does not implement that. I know there's hardware that actually does that out of band, but it's to my best knowledge, not part of Redfish and definitely not standard. So iSCSI Direct, and actually we have Ansible deploy, and now we have RAM disk deploy, which is just booting a RAM disk without flashing anything to hard drive. A minute of advertisement. Um, they are staying, as they are. Now, I hope that boot methods, we eventually probably switch to Redfish as a main one. I think Pixie will stay for compatibility for years to come, but maybe we'll stop being our to-go method. Anything? Okay, thank you very much.